Hello friends and welcome back to Station Years. Today's episode is going to be, I think, a little bit of a shorter one. We've got two primary goals. One is to make up all the alloys we need for our future expansions and upgrades. And two is going to be to make some of those upgrades. Probably just the tool printer mods for the most part, as they take quite a while to print. Uh, and I have a very limited amount of time today to record, but in future we're going to have just as much as always. Now, we're going to be using the Stationeers wiki to pull this one off today. This, uh, this, these hijinks, these escapades. And uh, it's, uh, let me tell you, let me tell you, it's a bit of a process. So, in order to make uh, Invar, Constantin, Electrum, and Solder, which are the four ingredients we prepared yesterday, we're going to need a wide range of pressures and temperatures, and it's going to be quite tricky to juggle them all. Constantin's the first one we're going to want to make, which is made out of copper and nickel. It requires a pressure between 20 and 100 megapascals, and temperature between 1 and 10 kilokelvin. Uh, basically, about 700 C to 10,000 C. There's a huge temperature and pressure range. It's the easiest one of the advanced metals to make, and we're going to start with that today. Uh, so our first point of call is going to be to pre-process the ores as is tradition. Uh, we're going to start off with some oxide in the furnace, and we're going to slowly work it up in size and temperature until we're at a point that we're comfortable with. Okay, cool. Pressure is rising, and now we're going to pre-process our two ores. There's going to be our ingot of nickel. We don't actually need the nickel, though. We want to convert this into constantin. And that's going to require, again, a pressure of 20 megapascals. We've got to multiply that pressure by 10 to get there. So let's do a further four oxides into the furnace, followed by a further three volatiles. And I'm just kind of going to eyeball this. It's more of an art than a science, to be completely honest. And let's see how we do here. And you know what? I'm thinking... In order to stop ourselves catching fire, something we're probably going to want to do is uh, move this vent to the backside as far away from us as possible. Uh, so that when we... Because we are going to have to vent little bits at a time uh, in order to try and, you know, control the temperature pressure situation. And everything on this side of the vent is currently sealed, so it's fine. I think we just move this as far away from ourselves as possible. Like right over there. That's going to be better. Okay, cool. That should help. It can technically pass through this frame. Maybe we should do something about that. I think for now we're going to risk it. Yeah, we're at 7 megapascals. Uh, we've got a long way to go. Let's add another 4 volatiles. And I'm also going to put away this, uh, <laughs> this wrench before I accidentally throw it in the furnace. I've done that before on a previous series. And then we're going to add in the oxides. And we're just going to keep stoking that fire. Yeah, again, the constantin's pretty easy to get. It's the it's the invar that's the real pain. But I mean, I'll explain the parameters for it first. But you always want to do constantin first, and you want to do the two of them at the same time. Because they sort of follow on from each other. Okay, we need to get more juice. Pressure is spiking. That's excellent. We're almost there. Now comes the oxide. Just remember, your, your furnace can explode. It explodes at around, I think it's 35 psi. Or at least that's when you start getting complaints. Okay, and as soon as we hit 20, we should see that switch over to Constantin. And there it is. We have Constantin. Perfect. That's one ingot down. Now, we need to pre-process the iron and the nickel to make Invar. Now, Invar requires a bit more tricky. It requires a pressure of 18 to 20 gigapascals, so we are currently over-pressurized by 2, and a very specific temperature range of 1.2 to 1.5. Very tricky to get to. So we're going to open the vent and immediately close it. I'm going to stand back because that's going to be very hot and very explosive. And we are currently slightly over... We're actually right against the pressure line, but we're slightly too hot. Oh, that sucks. Okay, I'm going to add some pressure and hopefully decrease the temperature with some ice. There we go, and we have made Ing Invar. Perfect. That was smooth as butter. Okay, next up, we're going to want to do Electrum. I think sold is the easiest one to do. Electrum's all the way down at 0.8 megapascals to 0.2 megapas 2.4 megapascals, sorry. Temperature range of 600 to 1 600 Kelvin to 100 kilokelvin. So basically 300C to 100,000C. So really you just kind of get the temperature the pressure down. That's what matters. Whereas with solder, you want to be over 1 megapascal but in a very very narrow temperature range. Um, so Electrum's got a narrow pressure range, high temperature range is the inverse. Okay, so we just need to dump the pressure out of here. So we're just going to vent. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. My mistake. Put that back in. The reagent. 
let that process, and then we're going to kind of dump a bunch of pressure. Now, of course, that pressure is very hot, so we're going to want to stand back while we watch that drop. Once it gets close to the end, oh, we can actually read it from here. Perfect. Yeah, moving that down there was a good idea. I think if it was close to us, it would have yeeted us into space. Okay, we need to get that down below 2.4 megapascals. Again, the temperature doesn't matter on this one. There's our 2.4. We can close it, and there's our electrum. Perfect. And now comes the final piece of the puzzle, the solder. And that is actually dropping pretty quickly. That's great for us. Oh, no, no, close this, close this. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, we can, we can just process the iron again. It doesn't matter if it's an ingot. It's more about the count than it is about the, the, the source, right? Okay, so the pressure here is fine. It's but over one, that's good. We just need to get the temperature down to 550. So I'm going to vent for a second. We're at 585. Oh, I should have had picked up some nitrogen ice because that's inert. And we could have just used that to cool things down, but it's okay. I think we're just going to naturally let this cool itself until we get to 550. And then we're going to have ourselves some solder. And then we can go and print up all of our uh, <laughs> our toolbench mods so we can get more advanced recipes. Okay, we should see the button turn green. There it is. That means we have made solder. Nice. Okay. And let's vent all of that crud out. Perfect. Let's collect our spoils. That was pretty painless. I'll be honest, the first time I did this, it was an absolute goddamn disaster. So I'm glad that went that smoothly this time. Uh, we're going to now jump inside. We can turn, close all this, get our tool belt back out. And uh, decide what we're going to do next. I probably should have, should have smelted that iron, but whatever. Okay, we need to start with the electric printer. This is where we are going to make our tool mod. And I know I'm going to need most of these in there, so let's just dump them for now. This is going to be our mod. Electronic printer mod. Perfect. Once we have level 2 electronic printer, then we have the ability to make the level 2 versions of all the other benches. And that's going to be the goal today. To get level 2 everybody. And as you can see, in order to make this, uh, sorry, this one, in order to make this electronic printer mod, we needed steel, electrum, constant, and solder. But constant, electrum, and sol and uh, solder use uh, very, very small amounts, like eight grams. We could make ten of nine of these, right, before we ran out. It's, it's ten actually, more. We could make twelve. Oh my god, before we ran out. And we don't need twelve. We only need one. So as you can see, once you're through those alloys, you got a lot of running space. Okay, there is our mod, and then in order to install it, we just have to hold a welder in our hands. Bang! We got a better electro printer. Perfect. Now when we turn it on, you'll see that it has a little just readout. How cool is that, huh? Okay, so now for the other mods, we build them here as well, I believe? Yes, we do. So we're gonna, the first thing I actually want, believe it or not, is gonna be the tool printer mod. And that's so that we can make a new welding torch that doesn't off-gas all of these pollutants and crap into the room. We're gonna make the electric arc welder. And then we're going to make the heavy drill. Another thing about uh, the print about the welder, of course, is that this one is gas powered. There is an actual canister in there, and inside this canister are volatile gases that inexplicably do not explode. And that's because you'll see it's O2 and volatile. Uh, yeah, the game doesn't actually put hydrogen in there because if it did, it would explode. The the devs have basically cheated you in a free canister of gas. But uh, once that runs out, you can't weld anymore at all. Uh, unless you could make the same mixture or cheat it in, which, as you, as I'm sure you can guess, it's a little harder than it sounds. So instead, what we do is we uh, we print ourselves an arc welder, and we just use electricity so that we don't have to deal with these problems. Okay, fantastic. That is our tool printer mod, and this should be, hopefully, the last time we have to do this weld. Very good. Because now we can flick this bad boy on. And uh, pop out a lot of these resources, because we're going to make two things. We're going to make a welder. The mark... We make the arc welder, that's the one we want. We need steel, electrum, invar, and solder. Uh, there is actually another one, which is the Mark II arc welder, but that requires... It's basically just the same thing, it costs a little bit more, and it doesn't get damaged in storms. It's it's not worth your time, it, I don't think it's all that much faster. I, I, don't, I don't think it's worth the effort, to be honest. Uh, so what did I need there? It was steel, electrum, invar, solder. Electrum, uh, steel... And solder and invar. There we go. Let's make ourselves one of those and we can put the torch away for good. Okay, nice. And then the next thing we're going to want is a drill to run it all. We want the mining drill brackets heavy, not the Mark II drill, the mining drill heavy. Very important. Okay, now this thing's going to need a couple of batteries to run it. So once we're done with this, we can sort that out. In fact, why don't we get a uh, battery charger going, a bigger one. 
a better one with a bit more of a throughput. Omi battery charger. There we go. Big one. Oh, that's, oh, that's quick. That's really quick. Why is that so quick? Okay, I now have two of these. Ah, uh, we'll sell one. We also have a drill. Fantastic. Uh, I think I'm going to pop this up. And we're going to just... Tsuk -tsuk. There we go. That can get sold at some point. And this one can get placed right over here. Oh, we could just put both of them down, I guess. Nah, we'll just do the one. The other one we could sell. We really need to get a trader post going as well. That's uh, that's going to be a critical, critical thing to sort out. Alright, next up we just need to get the steel back from this. So we can make a couple more large batteries. Battery. Why is the battery charge so quick? That's like too quick. Uh, I know the, the, the mod does make things print faster, but that's like too much faster, man. I can't handle that kind of speed. So this drill with its little battery, I'm actually just going to store as is. And, uh, because we're going to put a big one in the big battery. In the big drill, rather. Okay, let's do it like this. Do it like that. Charges a lot faster than the APC. Nice. Okay, there's our two big batteries for our two big tools. Uh, this one we can put away comfortably. Up in here. And there's our full battery for it. Very nice. Now we have uh, the big drill. Zun, 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 zun. It is triple the speed. Like, I know you guys haven't been seeing the mining anyway, but that's very much a quality of life thing for myself. Uh, why don't we get you going on the next mod? I think our next port of call is going to be... Oh, I don't even know. Uh, probably auto lathe. I think we're just going to do them all. So let's just get them all done. Auto lathe printer mod. Send it. There you go. And there's our new welder. So uh, it doesn't have any off-gassing, it doesn't do anything else. You just kind of point it at the stuff you want to weld, and it goes dzz, dzz, and it welds it. It does use power very quickly, though. That is the uh, that is the one thing to be concerned about. That's why you want a big battery in it. If a small battery, it'll do like five welds, and then it's dead. you got to get the big ones. And uh, speaking of batteries, our batteries are actually running a little low, but I think we're fine for the moment. Okay, that's the auto lathe mod, and now we can get the pipe bender mod. Perfect, and I'll show you exactly how this works. Oop. There you go, just like that, that easy, and that only used up 1% power. Yeah, big battery is the way to go. This makes all of our machines print a lot faster, which makes upgrading the base a lot faster. And so, so we're sort of kind of like front-loading our, ourselves a bit here. And I think in the next episode, we're going to do just a gigantic expansion in that direction. Maybe we're going to triple, quadruple the volume of this base so we can get atmospherics and everything all in one place. And then we'll build a little hydroponic station somewhere as well gonna be great maybe not all in we, we might do all the foundational work in one episode and then do all the and then do start doing the plumbing stuff in a uh, in a future one okay fantastic and there is the final piece we now have the advanced pipe bender as well awesome okay cool we uh we've got a lot of stuff going for us so what i'm gonna do because i've got about 50 minutes left today that i can record in i think what i'm gonna do is expand the power grid a little bit further and to do that we're gonna make some larger wind turbines these ones here the big ones I think we'll make three, and then we're gonna need a whole bunch of uh, we're gonna need a whole bunch of base plates to make them work after that as well. Okay, let's unpack all of this. We're gonna put all these away. We don't need them for a bit because uh, I'm gonna get this thing to just make a ton of cable coils. So you're just gonna need the gold and the upper, right? How much have we got left? 21 and 38. Cook it all up. I think we're gonna need a whole bunch of these, and it does cook a lot faster now as well, which is nice. Okay, the iron can get put away. Oh, uh, God knows we need space. Uh, you are going to make steel frames. Okay, there we go. We got 29 cables. We got uh, we got nine frames and sheets. It'll be enough. It'll be enough, I'm sure. Probably, maybe. Okay, let's cycle. And uh, go and expand the old power grid a little bit today. And I think that's going to be a good place to do it. It is a very small episode, little mini episode here. Um, I know the times are a bit random on this one, but I think it's more important that these episodes stay thematic, so they make sense next to each other, right? Okay, so I think we're going to expand this out to the side a little. These things are gigantic, and they need a lot of space, as you can see. Yeah, gigantic, compared to the other ones. It's uh, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. Damn, son, that's big. And what do you, you need to steal fresh sheets to, like, uh, to improve you, right? I think... Yep. And then, five cable coil. Okay, we're going to have to make some more cable coil. I don't have enough. 
And then, what else do you need? You need a screwdriver to finish construction. Voila! There we go. Steel frames look so much beefier, don't they? Big old strong edges. Compared to these puny little iron frames. Yeah, you love that. I actually have a, a few more here. We're, we're going to need more sheets and cable coils and whatnot, so we might as well go and uh, lay this down. But we can put down a few more of these frames just for a bit of space. That's good. Uh, and we can get these queued up at the very least. Put power on this side so it comes in there. And for this one, we'll put power on... I think we'll put power on that side. There you go. That should work. They're all pointing in different directions. I kind of like that. In fact, this one can move. Uh, what do I need to take you apart? Screwdriver required to deconstruct. Okay, then I'm guessing wire cutters. Then I'm guessing drill. Uh, angle grinder. Of course, how could I be so foolish? Oh, it's five steel sheets per? Damn, okay, we need to get a few more. And the wrench to pick it up. Okay, and the reason I'm saying is because I think it'd be cool if they all faced roughly the same direction. Okay, and rushing outside, you can see that they are complete. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me finishing these off. The power tripped just as I was about to hit the stop recording button and the MP4 file got corrupted, but... And also, did I overwrite my quick save? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Look at it. It's beautiful. We've uh, we've only gone and done it. We've only gone and done it, gamers. Damn, that's kind of a cool shot too, isn't it? And a little print screen, right? That looks like a little bit of a thumbnail to me. If I'm honest, a little bit of Jupiter in the background. A little bit of hey, bit of huh? Really hard not to put Jupiter in the background of these things. Anyway, that is our three things. Let's see how much power they're actually making. That's uh, that's kind of a big point of contention here. Is, is was this actually worth it? So. Uh, I think we need to separate the lines over here. I think this is the easiest way to tell how everything's working with the network chip in here. So right now we're producing five, 450 watts over here and things are slowing down. And these three ones alone are doing 200. Uh, as this is doing 300, but there's eight of them and three of these. Unfortunately, I didn't catch them at their peak. But yeah, as you can see, the wind really does just drop off to zero at times. But then it goes all the way up. And this is a actually fairly predictable pattern that these will follow. It's it's a bit goofy. Now, uh, the wind in this, it's it's not random. It's uh, It moves in kind of like a sine wave. Constant up and down ebb and flow. Uh, and it'll go from zero all the way up to its peak and all the way down, which means that these actually do produce average power over time, uh, which I think is a little bit gamey. Um, it does occasionally, it does have some variance, uh, clearly, but I don't think there's that much. I don't think there's as much as people think there is. Uh, I think that the devs got a little lazy with the way they implemented these and that they just kind of go up and down and up and down and up and down. And sure, there are some changes to the peaks and troughs, but it's not like it goes up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, down. It goes up, then down, then up, then down. It's uh, it's really, really predictable. So there we go. We hit the bottom of the trough. Now we go up again. Let's see how high we get this time. Looks like we peaked wattage at 367, whereas this is at 462. So, basically what that means is that each of these was producing about 120 watts, whereas the eight of these, is that how many I've got here? I've got nine. Oh, of course, I can't make the math easy on myself, can I? The nine of these were producing about 40, uh, which is, you know, not nearly as good. Maybe 45. So yeah, definitely the big ones are better. Um, I wouldn't rush them. It's more like once you've got access to them, you might as well add them to your network. But uh, they are very expensive. Um, for, I think, I think sufficient enough gains to warrant that expense. But I don't know. That's up to each person to decide on their own. Uh, the big one really is in the storms. These will produce 800 watts on their own. I think that one of these produces like 2.7 kilowatts. So your total potential output is a lot higher. There we go. We now actually... What's our combined output at a high, high load? There we go, we're at one point... I turned off my stabilizer, didn't I? Yep. We're now at one point... 2.1, 2.2... Oh yeah, those batteries are going to get topped all the way up. That's that's how much we were producing in the peak of that storm. Was 2.7, and now we're just making it in the middle of the day without any other input. So we have access to significantly more power, and boom, we've just hit, we've just hit the storm wattage. And we're going way past it. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, great. So that was a nice addition. We've got a little uh, a little murder pier for all the birds on Europa to fly into as soon as we start seeding life anyway. Speaking of birds on Europa, are the chickens alive? 
Go have a look. I doubt it. It is frozen, but we have been playing for a while. Freezing in this game doesn't actually cease. Okay, it just kind of pauses it. Uh, sorry, slows it down, rather. Uh, where is my food bin? Here we go. Let's have a look. Nope, they are all rotten. We want to make chickens. We're going to have to buy some eggs. All right, but guys, that is unfortunately all I have time for today. Uh, I think at, in between episodes, I'm going to print out like a million steel frames and steel sheets. And next episode, we're going to go ham and just uh, we're just going to go on a huge expansion. I'm also going to I might do some mining uh, the next morning. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for the month. Couch Potato, The Senate, Kelly Ananas, Call Me Bo 82 Riley David, LCG Canyon Sahar, Knee Cruncher, Old Man Tater, Brick and Friendly Beaver, Not Gay Arthur, Cut Beef Go Ham, Jack Smallman, Rivo, Adachi, I'm Alpha, Alan Oselaher, Charlie Weber, Mermix, Mel Roman, and Officer C4. You guys rock.